Alternate Controls for Work When Social Distancing is Not Practical Mark Johnson, Environment, Safety, and Health Director, Code 106 There is no question that our lives are much different today than they were a few short weeks ago. As we navigate the changing environment of COVID-19, we continue to adapt the way we do things in order to support the command's mission while keeping everyone safe. Many policies have already been implemented in order to meet the recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration to keep the risk to all of us low. I can't stress enough the importance of basic hygiene. Wash your hands, avoid touching your face, and especially ensure social distancing whenever possible, maintain six feet of separation between yourself and others. This includes in places you may not ordinarily think about, like walking through the gate, the elevators, and even in the restroom. Further, in our efforts to follow guidance and recommendations from the Navy, Department of Defense, and our partners at the state and county, we have implemented a number of measures to help limit the number of people in the shipyard at the same time. This includes many of your coworkers working from home, working a different shift, or taking leave to limit the number of people working close together. There is rigorous command guidance to self-assess our well-being and to stay home if we're not feeling well. We've changed the way that we conduct gatherings, meetings, and training in order to maintain the new expectations for social distancing. For those who continue to support the mission here at the shipyard, we have manufactured and distributed cleaning kits and hand sanitizer, implemented additional contract cleaning support for sanitization, and are manufacturing or procuring additional PPE to further supplement social distancing. While we are continuing to do everything we can to maintain a low risk environment, some of our critical work can only be accomplished working together. OSHA has defined medium risk work as that which cannot be accomplished while maintaining social distancing conventions. They have provided recommendations on controls to use to keep us healthy even when this is the case. To be clear, this serves as a challenge to each one of you to identify innovative methods to accomplish the mission while adhering to the new standards. Do you need two people in close proximity? Can you use technology or tooling to avoid this? When this is simply not feasible, PSNS and IMF is implementing engineering controls, administrative controls, and personal protective equipment based on OCHA's recommendations when work must progress with personnel working within six feet of each other for more than 10 minutes. The training included here will cover the controls to be incorporated for medium risk work, including the usage, cleaning, and disposal instructions for the PPE that will be available to you. The intent of the command is to execute as much work as possible in a low exposure risk environment. If social distancing can be maintained, no additional PPE is required above job-specific PPE to safely execute the work. If social distancing cannot be maintained, consider other engineering controls, such as a physical barrier as shown, reach tools, or remote video monitoring devices. It is only when the work cannot be mitigated to low exposure risk that face masks are required. Face shields, gloves, or aprons may be considered as well. The following is a review of proper usage of some of these potential items. Actual PPE may differ, but fundamental principles still apply. Donning PPE Inspect the mask to make sure there are no obvious tears or holes in either side of the mask and that the elastic that will loop over your ears is intact. The top of the mask is the side that contains a piece of bendable metal. The front of the mask has black stitching. The side without black stitching will touch your face. Hold the mask by the ear loops. Place a loop around each ear so that the mask covers your nose, mouth, and chin. Pinch the metal strip so it molds to the shape of the bridge of your nose. Adjust the mask as needed so there are no gaps between your face and the mask. Inspect PPE to ensure there are no obvious holes, cracks, or defects. Place PPE on face and for goggles secure with straps. 
Adjust straps or headband as needed to ensure PPE is securely in place. Take out a glove from its original box. Touch only a restricted surface of the glove corresponding to the wrist. Don the first glove. Turn the external surface of the glove to be donned on the folded fingers of the gloved hand. Take the second glove with the bare hand and touch only a restricted surface of the glove corresponding to the wrist. Removing PPE Remove the PPE. Avoid touching the lens or frame of the PPE because these areas may be contaminated. Pinch one glove at the wrist to remove it without touching the skin of the forearm and peel away from the hand. Remove the second glove by rolling it down the hand and fold into the first glove. Discard the removed gloves. Avoid touching the front or the back of the mask because these areas of the mask may be contaminated. Hold both of the ear loops gently. Lift and remove the mask without touching the front or back of the mask. Dispose of used masks in a common trash. You may launder your shipyard manufactured masks to use additional days until the mask shows signs of wear. Your supervisor will provide you with more detailed instructions for using and cleaning PPE shown in this video. The safety and well-being of every employee is the top priority of this command in the Navy. To reflect that, all efforts being taken are thorough and robust. Remember to wash your hands, sanitize your work areas, and take advantage of materials the command is making available to you. We are continually breaking new ground and covering new territory, and we will continue to do so until the risk has passed. Watch out for one another and stay safe. Thank you.